slash podcast 121 take one. Hi, friends, and welcome back to The Sesh. I'm Kendall. And I am Janelle. And we are joined today, as usual, by our wonderful producer, Sydney. Curly is not here today. I was going to say, it's really not usual. Yeah, I guess not usual. Well, Sydney's always here, at least one of them. Yeah. You know. Yes. Yeah. Well, Curly's busy, busy girl right now. We are actually moving all our editors to a new editing program. Yeah. And it's complicated. It's complicated, y'all. It's like so, a different language. It's, it's taking everyone longer to do things. Yes. So Curly's very busy, busy editing way, but she's kind of with us in spirit because she will be editing this show True later. That. So shout she will see you. it all. Hi, Curly. Hey, girlfriend. We love you. Which, by the way, quick shout out to yes. Curly for making our amazing gavel. Incredible work. I'm sad that she's not here for the big reveal, but look at this, guys. Stunning. Gorgeous piece of art. Do honestly. we remember last time how I destroyed her work? Yeah, it was accident? very sad. It was, but it this one is, anywhere. I mean, it ain't going anywhere. Yeah, it's got uh, super These glue. are all Sororsky. Yeah. Just kidding. Fancy. <laughs> but yeah, we are breaking it out today because we are going to be doing I Am The Asshole. Am or, I The Asshole? That's right. <laughs> and yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Am I The Asshole? You guys have been requesting it. We haven't done it in a minute, so we decided to get some of that going today. We that's have a right. fun day ahead of us, y'all. Um, a few little... The not world even, news yeah, stories. World. <laughs> we are PBS. Nightly news with the <laughs> <a> sesh. <laughs> we are the nightly news segment for you. We are also going to be playing an old game that we haven't played in a long time, yeah. at least a year. Two yeah. Truths and a Lie, where we try to fool each other, Which try to last lie to each time, other. Kendall did not understand what Two Truths and a Lie typically is. You didn't understand. Mm-mm. Two truths and a lie is typically about yourself. Like you say, like two truths. I know, about but why would we do that here? So that... we miscommunicated last time. <laughs> Kendall fucked up. <laughs> you <laughs> fucked up. No. Well, anyway, uh, actually, I was so bad at it. That's when Nicholas T. Birdcage oh, was God, born. Shout out to fucking Birdcage. If you guys are one of a long time viewer, you know. If you know, Can you we know get Birdcage. A little throwback clip in here is it even funny yeah it was pretty funny these ones are about names celebrity okay. names which one is the lie so number one leonardo dicaprio his first name was decided when his mother was pregnant she was looking at a leonardo da vinci painting in florence italy and he kicked at for the first time while she was looking at it so I he was like that. i'm gonna name him leonardo dicaprio that's cute Secondly, Miley Cyrus is not actually named Miley Cyrus. Her given name is Destiny Hope. Okay. And the final one is that Nicholas Cage's middle name is actually Bird, like B U R D, and he was named after his uncle Carl T. Bird. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Come again. He's named after his uncle Carl T. Bird. So his, his name is Nicholas Bird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck you just said. I'm gonna go with that was a lie. I just really gave that one away, didn't I? I just cracked myself up too much. Birdcage, fucking birdcage. God damn. That shit killed me. Yeah, so we'll see what comes out of today's lies. I actually got some good ones. I had fun putting this together this weekend. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So. Um, So yeah, I mean, you know, just another day. On the yep. greatest podcast in the whole world. Folks. That's right. right. That's right. And we're going to start off also by talking about our weekends because you guys have been 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 you have been enjoying our weekend updates. Weekend updates. Which my weekend was boring as fuck. So I don't know. Why? Did nothing. like nothing. Did like nothing. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Holly's, I got Holly's um, a cold. Oh yeah. My daughter has her first cold, you guys. Sad. Poor girl. Last night was rough. I actually may seem kind of out of it and weird today because I'm running on like four hours of sleep because poor girl's nose was running and she had a little fever. Poor widow girl. I know, but she's so cute. I don't even, well, I do mind, but it like makes it less annoying because yeah, she's course. cute. And she wants oh, you. Yeah. She just wants to cuddles. Yeah, exactly. Poor widow girl. Yeah. So I need to get home to her soon. Freaking cute. But yeah. I, I'll, oh, I got my um eyebrows re-microbladed. And you said that hurt like a bitch? Retouched. Yeah. It hurt like a bitch. Damn. I think the last person who did it really kind of half-assed it because they were done in an hour. Oh, yeah. And I got them retouched by our queen. Our queen. She does Janelle's lashes. 
Shout out Katie. You know who you are. Sorry. Um, but yeah, she did an amazing job. Took three hours though, but it's because she really knows what she's doing. But it hurts. Uh, do you have anything on your eyebrows right now? Yeah, I have a little bit of pencil on the the edge where it's like kind of red to cover up the, the oh, redness. Gotcha. But Are they scab. Yeah. Uh, yes, they're scabbing. Are they on itchy? The side. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's and it's like it's a tattoo, tattoo on your yeah. face, especially the microblading part. So I did a mix of the powder. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Just like the color fill in and then the actual hair blades. And that is what hurts because it feels like this giant scrape. Yeah, it's not good. Yikes. It's not good. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much my weekend. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot this weekend. Um because my dog, Maggie, is on I almost said house arrest. <laughs> she pretty much is on house arrest. She's on crate she arrest. She's on house arrest. Yeah, she's on Poor crate girl. arrest. Last Monday. <laughs> At night, she started acting really weird and was like shaking. Really, excuse me, Sydney. I'm telling you a story. Sorry. <laughs> um, she started acting really weird. Was like shaking really bad and walking like all hunchback and weird. And then, um, at like three in the morning, we woke up and it was just way worse. So we took her into the ER and they figured out that she was having really bad back pain and had a really high heart rate. Really, really high, high like two eighty or something, and it wouldn't go down. Oh. They gave her a shot of fentanyl, which I didn't even know you could do uh to little dogs she's only like 12 pounds she's a little maltese um but it helped her a lot well no that didn't help her really she's so a that's why she's maltese yeah she's 75 percent maltese 25 percent beaver terrier. oh right beaver she's beaver. a beaver yeah she's a beaver but anyways um yeah it didn't really help so we had to leave her there like all day on tuesday which scared the fuck out of me i couldn't they couldn't figure out what was wrong and they finally got her stable um, she was in the little doggy ICU. I was very upset. My poor yeah, girl. It was scary. I was. Really I was really worried, worried too. But they um, <clears throat> they basically were able to get her stable, and they said that it could do an MRI. But she was walk because the, really the only way to figure out exactly if it was like a slip disc or a broken something, like whatever, you have to do an MRI. But um, she was walking still and actually was like showing signs of improvement, and so they. Gave us the option to just take her home and do like crate rest and meds for four to six weeks, which she's not thrilled about. That's going to be so hard. Yeah. She's such an active little she's girl. She's so active. And yeah, she like runs the whole house and is the boss of uh, Charlie and Cookie. So she's not pleased to be like in her little cage all the time. And Charlie's not pleased either because Maggie's getting all the attention. Yeah, Charlie, I got, I bring her home and I'm like babying her, obviously. And he's literally coming up to me crying and pawing at me, acting so annoyed. Charles. Oh my God, Char. Charles, Charles, Charles. Yeah. So anyways, um, she's doing okay. She's, and by the way, I posted this on my Instagram just because when it was happening, I was so freaked out. I was like, I actually, because I believe in the power of positive vibes and, you know, um, sending people love or like thinking about someone, sending them strength or whatever. Yeah. So I sent, I posted on Instagram asking for you guys to send her like positivity. And so many people had been asking for updates. And so just want to say if you were one of those people that sent me messages, I got so many sweet messages and it meant so much to me. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Um, but yeah, she's doing better. She's a little bit slower than she was, but that's also because she's on medicine. So yeah, we're just taking it day by day. That was pretty much my weekend. I just babied her a lot. Poor and girl. She was a sad girl, but yeah, she's okay. It was, it was pretty scary. You would be really freaked out. Yeah, I was freaked out. Yeah, I felt I so bad you. for her. It's so hard when your pets are in pain and they can't communicate I, to you. They, right, exactly. And then I had to leave her and I mm. knew that, that would scare her to be like by herself. And I felt so sad and like freaked out. But yeah, she came back luckily that that evening. I was worried she'd have to stay there again. But yeah, it always sucks. Have you ever like been to the vet in the middle of the night? Like gone oh, to the yeah. vet? It's fucking so scary. <clears throat> yeah. I hate it. Sorry, my throat's like kind of scratchy. I feel like I'm sick too. Oh no! But yeah, I have one time Bernie. He was just being dramatic though. Really? Yeah, we like thought something was wrong with him, and he was a puppy, and we brought him to the BCA in the middle of the night, and then he just took a shit and felt better, and we had a three hundred dollar oh, vet bill. Oh my god, Bernie! Yay, Bernie. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't had anything as scary as what uh, you were dealing with. I felt really bad for you guys. No, yeah, I was, I was so out. worried about her too. You know, my poor little girl. You know. So, anyways, yeah, she's doing better though, and she's on the mend. She wants to do 
all the active things and we won't let her and she's just confused we like put her in the crate and she just looks at us like what the fuck yeah. did i do that's so bad to deserve this oh, shit yeah, she probably thinks she's in time yeah out. she does it's so sad not that i use the crate for timeout, but like i still think she thinks that she's you know did something wrong it's, yeah so how could she not yeah, you be, be more key poor girl what about you sydney did you do anything fun this weekend um no honestly not really i we just you went out to dinner yeah i guess we went to dinner <laughs> you were facetiming us before you went yeah yeah it was a good time facetiming you guys was probably my you know highlight because we did it on friday and it was Saturday. my highlight too mm-hmm. right? it was all the good facetime a three-way facetime yeah it was like we didn't have to get up drive you just hang out over the phone hell yeah. yeah that's right that's right baby how was dinner you guys went to ocean prime yeah it oh, was good because so it in was like denver restaurant week so they had like a deal it was like two like you get a full meal for like 45 bucks hell yeah, yeah. Um, i know deal. did it was it a set menu yeah they had a set menu but they had all their like really good stuff on there did they have the uh goat cheese ravioli that's oh, our God fave bless, that shit's so um good. They did have some. I know they had a ravioli, so maybe unless it was a mm. lobster one, but I'm pretty yeah. sure that motherfucking goat cheese ravioli, man, it is so good. You turned me on to that. Oh, I crave it so. Damn. in the middle of the night. I I'm know, like, right? damn, I could have some of that it's right now. So good. It's really good. Mm. It was good. What Anyways. else? Nothing else? No, not no. really. Well, I did have a weird dream. Ooh, Ooh a dream. Yes. What was it about? It involved uh, Janelle and John. So oh. and- <laughs> just kidding. Were they filming I'm a almost dirty video? That I dreamt this. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> for some reason, we were, I don't know where we were, but it's like we like, went on a trip and Janelle and John were in the shower and the door was just like open and you guys were just showering from okay. what I know. And okay. I, I was in and out of there because we like, for some reason, all were sharing this bathroom. Like, okay. Jared too or whatnot. Like. But you and John are like in the shower and you're like, oh, I need to wash my hair. Like he was like, get the soap or shampoo out. And then you're like, make sure you like, make sure you grab it out of my butt. I hate <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I swear to God. I started to use like. I'm telling John this. Yeah, like I'm like get the shampoo out of my ass, or like get the hair that the extra hair that you know goes down your back. Like, make oh, sure you the get the hair. hair. I thought this bar of soap was up her ass. <laughs> no, they like, grabbed the hair too. Yeah, so I had hairy ass. Got it. Yeah, like you know, like when your hair. Just, yeah. So you're like, make sure to grab the hair out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> it was so Shut random. Up. And then at that point, I had walked out of the bathroom. And that was it. Oh, yeah, that's that. all you remember yeah so then the next morning this is honest i woke up remembering like so now i just feel like john take gets the hair out of your ass when he you... does actually that's part of their relationship contract yeah oh. yeah i usually <laughs> bend over and spread them <laughs> he does an inspection <laughs> oh this is getting like, sick really fast after you shower you're like hey john i'm ready no yeah, hair <laughs> removal every <laughs> service time yeah it's good john's that's on. why you're marrying him that's right that's why because he gets the hair out of my ass <laughs> <laughs> Which side no, I do find hair in my butt crack when I'm showering. Who doesn't, yeah, right? right? Yeah. I know. It's normal thing. Dude, but... when I was like losing a ton of hair when I was like four months postpartum, it was always in my ass. Always. Why is it always the ass? I think it's just because it like funnels yeah. right into the crack. It goes doot, I hate doot. that feeling. That's probably one of yeah, my biggest I love that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was this is like TMI for this show, but I was <laughs> when I was on the treadmill this weekend, I had I could feel something was oh. in my ass. <laughs> And I went to the bathroom and it was air. I could feel something was in my ass. That's the worst. That's the worst feeling. Ugh. I hate loose hairs. That's like one of my oh, pet peeves. It's like finding a hair in my shirt or yeah. in my ass. Or <laughs> this is a sick show. Or just like hair in general. Like I if, hate it. Me too. Like if I you can already read the comments now that are like, I love you guys, but you're disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I had to skip through this part. Okay, sorry, but some of you would appreciate the ass talk. All right, so in world news, you guys. Okay, in world news. These motherfuckers are on the news. Tell people what these are. Why are you making them Janelle's. Who are these guys? These are pop. Funko Pops. Is that what they're called? Funko? Funko Pops. Pops. This guy's funky. His head's like, come on. (laughs) They all spin their heads, I think. She, oh, yeah, she does a little bit, too. Yeah. Anyways, these are two characters from Will and Grace, my favorite show ever. I have all four of the characters in my office. Are these, um... That's Jack. This is Will. This is, no, oh. that's Jack. That's Grace. Okay, Jack and Grace. Yes, they're here. And Kendall has some fucking tea on Pops. Oh, well, yeah. Funko so what's Pops the tea? is canceled, Kendall's baby. making a kiss. 
<laughs> well, these guys can stay because they're pre-cancellation. They're oh, cute. no, wait. Why are they canceled? I love Pops. Dude, this is really weird. $30 million worth of the Funko Pop figures are going straight to the landfill. They have a surplus of inventory and they're having trouble just keep... It's more expensive to keep them on the shelf. So they're just trashing <gasps> $30 million worth of product. Oh my landfill. God. That's hor- And they're literally just pieces of plastic. Yep. That's fucking bad. Yep. Last year, they had to rent excess warehouse space just to hold up uh, the Funko figures. What the hell? Put wide, on sale. This is a CNN article. It says wide range from Baby Yoda to Eddie Van Halen. Oh my. Yeah, they have so many of these fucking things. Yeah, I guess they have, they, they're um, on the decline. Yeah, they're on the decline. And so. Oh my God. They're just Jeez. eliminating by trashing them. Eliminating? Yep. Are they making any more? Are they like, is that it? I don't know. I think they're just getting rid of a ton. Like old of, ones that don't sell? Yeah. The ones that haven't really made the cut. Oh my god, that's so bad! Wow, canceled pops. Okay, well I'm not gonna throw these guys out. Yeah, they're just sending them to the landfill. Isn't that crazy? That's horrible. Thirty million dollars worth. That's How horrible. many fucking Funko Pops? What's the is app? that? Look up the average price of a Funko Pop. Damn, they're expensive. Average price twenty two to three hundred fifty. What? What? I don't think so. They're I selling think... for twenty two bucks each, but the big box signed versions sometimes can go for three fifty or more, and they can be auctioned off for higher, obviously, in eBay and stuff. Twenty two. Yeah. Okay, so you said thirty-five million. The Marvel collection is twenty-one to forty a piece. So you said thirty-five million. Yeah. Let's divide it by thirty, just for an average thing. Yeah. So different? that's one point one six million pops. That's horrible. Right, just going in the, the trash. Yep. Mm-hmm. All that plastic just wasted. Why? Why don't you like donate them? That's what I was They're saying. Like, toys you could kids. easily like send them out to a bunch of hospitals nationwide yeah. or donate them to Toys for Tots or something. Totally. There's got to be plenty of places you could donate, oh but it probably God. would like lower the value or something. I'm sure it's some bullshit like that. Kind of yes. how, you know, like luxury brands will destroy their yeah. product or Ulta will it's like fucking weird. Yeah, like smash up their stuff or like wreck products mm-hmm. so that people oh, really? can't get them out of the dumpster. Yeah, because it like lowers the value or something. Damn. It's really weird business. It's sad. Damn, Funko Pops canceled. Uh, yeah, very bad. But very, very these bad. guys can stay. All right, Grace. They're Jack pre pre bullshit era. Is you know it is kind of a scam, laundry detergent. I mean, first of all, why do they come in these massive plastic jugs? They're inconvenient, they're awkward, they're messy, and did you know they're filled with up to 90% water? That's right, people, you're paying for water. Washing machines already use water, so why should we pay more for it? Not to mention, 91% of those jugs don't get recycled. That's right, 700 million jugs wind up in our landfills every single year. But it's not like you can just stop doing your laundry, so do what I did, switch to Earth Breeze. My new Earth Breeze laundry detergent eco sheets look like dryer sheets, but they're not. They dissolve 100% in any wash cycle, hot or cold. They couldn't be easier. There's no measuring involved, which I love. There's no mess. You just toss them in. And the best part, they work. Take it from me, you guys. Earth Breeze has really made the whole concept of detergent better. The packaging is compact, biodegradable, and plastic free. Their eco sheets are vegan, cruelty free, and dermatologically tested and safe for sensitive skin. Plus, they offer flexible subscriptions that can be adjusted, paused, or canceled by you at any time without penalty. And with their buy one, give 10 initiative, each purchase donates 10 loads of detergent to a charitable cause of your choice. A whopping 30 million loads of laundry have already been donated. These little sheets have turned a chore into an act of kindness. Like I said, they work. You still get a powerful clean for your clothes. I was a little skeptical just seeing these little sheets, but man, they really are powerful. Plus, they're better for the planet and they make laundry easier. Plus, Earth Breeze allows you to do good. And I'm telling you this, but you won't really know until you try it yourself. So if you don't like Earth Breeze, they'll actually give you a full refund. You don't even have to send it back. They are that confident that you'll love it as much as I do. So now is the time to try Earth Breeze, friends, because right now our seshis can subscribe and save 40%. Just go to earthbreeze.com slash sesh to get started. That's earthbreeze.com slash sesh for 40% off. Earthbreeze.com slash sesh. Anyways, um, we have this other viral. Oh, yes. We need to talk about this because this is hilarious and crazy. So this actually happened back in 2016 slash 2018, but then just like recently went viral again. Like yeah. all these 
articles are talking about it and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just so funny. I just feel like we have to <laughs> chat about it. Yeah, as animal lovers, this is interesting to us. Exactly. So basically what happened is there is a there was a family in a very remote part of China who bought what they thought was a Tibetan Mastiff puppy while on vacation back in 2016. Now, these puppies are very, I mean, they grow to be very, very big dogs. They are so freaking cute, by the way. I want one. They're like adorable. They really they're, are. they're black and, and brown. Uh, they're super fluffy. They're adorable. Anyways, they can weigh up to as much as 150 pounds. So they're big ass dogs. And they got this dog. They bring it home. And right away, they're all shook because the dog has a giant appetite. The dog's fucking hungry as hell, okay? <laughs> Scarfing down a box of fruits and two buckets of noodles a day. <laughs> two <laughs> buckets of noodles, holy shit. <laughs> Why were they feeding you noodles? I don't know. Buckets full. Buckets full of noodles and boxes like of fruits. 20 little buckets. packs of ramen in each bucket. But I has a bucket. <laughs> That's kind of whack as fuck. Why are they giving the dog noodles? That cannot good be question. good for it. Anyways, two years in, okay, 2018 the family's dog was weighing in at 250 pounds and still growing it had many of pounds to gain still side note oakley's close to that 250 he's oh just kidding i'm sorry <laughs> Why i'm off like by 100 pounds <laughs> 150 he's 140 and that's about the size of an average tibetan mastiff so okay. they're very similar sizes mm-hmm. and oakley's a big boy he is he but he's is. not 250 yeah Anyways, eventually the dog started to walk on its two legs, back legs. And they were like, what the fuck is going on? That's so weird. That's so weird. That's literally so weird. Why are they doing this? What are you doing, dog? The owner said, quote, the more he grew, the more like a bear he looked. And surprise, surprise, homie was a bear. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. So the owner reaches out to authorities and turns out this supposed dog was an Asiatic black bear. (laughs) Shit. A fully grown male Asiatic bear, also known as a Himalayan bear or moon bear, can weigh up to 400 pounds. They're like, no wonder he was eating so many damn noodles. These, this guy's like, oh, it's not just ramen that he loves. It's a bear. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Buckets of fruit and ramen. <laughs> That's amazing. Anyways, um, this entire time, though, the owner has the bear living in her house, which is like fucking crazy, honestly. If you see the pictures... It looks like a bear. Okay, They're it's not a dog. lucky that the bear didn't like yeah. attack them or attack a child or another animal. I know. But they did have to have the bear tranquilized before transporting it to the Yunnan Wildlife Rescue because mm-hmm. rescue staff that came to pick up the bear were too scared to interact with the wild animal while it was fully alert. Obviously. And officials have reported that the bear is now living a healthy life in its new home. I wonder if he still has noodles. <laughs> they're like yeah but he still feeds a full diet of noodles. <laughs> noodles that is wild to me i'm curious why this story has gone viral again i, know, I don't know why Because i've seen it everywhere i know i can't figure it out either like there's nothing there's no, no like there's not the no anniversary update. of the finding or whatever the internet is weird i bet it came from like tiktok or something probably um i can't help but judge that family a little bit like how do yeah. you not know it was a bear I mean, it looks like a damn bear. It looks bear. like a damn bear. Look at this. It's not a dog. It's a bear. One first, thousand maybe percent. See. Yeah, maybe a puppy. But then I feel like you'd figure that out pretty quick. Oh, he's cute. Instead of barking, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Bears are so cute, though. They're so cute. I wish they were like more Puddly. huggable. And I know. I have, want like, a, a pet home bear. bear. A home, home. bear. Mm-hmm. Domesticated bear. I love bears. They're very cute. They are. They're so cute. Does kind of remind me of Oakley. His smelt. So yeah. Um, watch make sure that your dogs are actually your dogs, folks. I don't know. Charlie could definitely be a baby he polar bear. Look 100% at him. Let's good. let's get a close up here. Let's analyze. Fluffy, white, Charles. Ferocious. Show your tusks. He has tusks, not teeth. Okay. Look at those suckers. This is a wild beast, not a dog. <laughs> this is a this is a polar bear. Yeah, either for that sure. or a lamb. Mm, I lean baby polar. Baby polar bear. Are you He's just like miniature polar. Grow up one day and eat me because polar bears are really mean. 
They are mean. They're like super aggressive. Fun fact, since we get are getting into our facts yes. next. Hit me with the facts. Did you know that polar bear fur is not actually white? It's translucent. Really? Yes. Wow. Actually, I heard that when I was a young chap, so I hope it's true. Sydney, can you fact check me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so why do they look white? Just because there's so much I of it? I think the sun reflects on it or something. They, they sometimes look yellow. It looks like they've been... They got pee on themselves. No offense, but polar bears look a little nasty sometimes in the wild. They don't give a damn. You clear. think they give a shit? <laughs> They're like, I did pee on myself. Thank you. <laughs> Charles pees on himself. He says, no, the fuck I don't. Don't out me like that. He might be a walrus with those tusks. We're not completely sure. We have to DNA test yeah, him. 23 and me, this guy. Because I don't know. I gave him Embark and they said Bijan, but I mm, don't know about that. I think 93% walrus. Look at her, a bad little boy and I love you. He says I'm not bad. Oh, it's my Bichon. Okay, is that true? Um, yes. So beneath all the huh. thick fur, so polar bears have jet black skin, but the polar bear's fur is also translucent, which is so strange. <gasps> wow, isn't that crazy? Oh, and I, Fun fact. I remember hearing about this. Their hairs on their back are hollow. Hollow hair. Hollow hairs, folks. They're like wow. little needles. Oh. So they have like a. Holographic projection That's type right. situation happening or a reflection. They're actually fake. <laughs> yeah, polar bears aren't real. They're not the real. real. Polar bears are not real. Are you ready to get into our facts though? Because I'm so excited. I'm ready. Now you have more facts than I do, correct? You yeah. want extra rounds? I made four you rounds. Handle yourself? Okay. Yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't eliminate one. You know, That's right. I found too many good facts. So we won't be keeping track of score or anything. This is just for funsies because <laughs> it wouldn't be fair since I have more rounds. But True I that. couldn't contain myself. Very good. Okay, so starting out, food facts. Mm, Ready? Food facts. All right, number one, Gatorade was developed for the Florida Gators football team. Okay. Number two, Pizza Hut was originally called House of Pizza. Mm, Now I want pizza. That sound good. Pizza Hut is trash, though. Oh, Pizza Hut sucks, by the way. Ew. (laughs) I don't know how those (laughs) hosts are still in business. Sorry. Okay, anyways. (laughs) Okay, Taco Bell. Mm was the first fast food chain to hire women as managers. Which one is the lie? I'm going to say Pizza Hut was a lie. Damn it. Am I right? Yes. Hell yeah. I know it called House of Pizza. I knew the Gatorade one. Oh, really? Yeah. I remember hearing about that somehow. Yeah, I thought that was a cool fact. And then the Taco Bell one, I feel like was too unique for you to make up. But that's good. Shout out to Taco Bell, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. Shout out. Kind of tears. Fucking love their asses, man. Shout out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Imagine if we got sponsored by Taco Bell. They should. We pretty much are. We talk about them all the yeah, time. Yeah, we're literally Taco Bell's biggest fans. We talk about Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Some people call it Taco Hell. How rude. My dad says that. So fuck. He thinks it's hilarious. It's not funny at all. It's offensive. Okay. Okay, ready? Yep. This has no, like, theme. It's just really random. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> Number one. The Bichon Frise was used as a drug-sniffing dog back in the 1930s. You sniff drugs, Bichon? Number two. The national animal of Scotland is a unicorn. That is true. Number I went there and I remember three. That. Ketchup was once sold as a medicine. Interesting. Well, I know that this, the unicorn thing is true. Okay. The ketchup. Why would it have been a medicine? Maybe because of the vitamin C? And I don't know about Charlie sniffing drugs. Back in the 1930s? 1930s. They were pretty dumb back then. Maybe. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Sorry if there's any 1930s viewers out there. <laughs> Damn. That's a joke. Congrats. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will have to go with ketchup is the lie. Nope. Bichon, Bichon lie. was not used as a drug sniffing dog as far Darn as I know. Darn it. Charlie. Back in the 1830s, tomato ketchup used to be sold as a medicine, claiming to cure ailments like diarrhea, indigestion, and jaundice. (laughs) Diarrhea. Take some ketchup. Ketchup. (laughs) (laughs) I think even at one point they made ketchup pills. Really? Or like we're going to or something. I read something about ketchup pills. Interesting. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything to it. Was it actually helpful or was that just some snake oil bullshit? I think it's some snake oil bullshit. Hmm. Very interesting. Those were good. Thank you. You got me. I got you. Got him. Okay. Okay, Next. Hit me. All right. These are science questions. uh, All right. Number one. Humans technically start dying at age 24 because that's when your cells stop multiplying as fast as they're dying. Two. 
It is sad. You can see the Great Wall of China from space. Okay. Three, there are enough strands of DNA in the average human body to stretch from the sun to Pluto and back 17 times. I'm going to say, I know the Great Wall of China one is true. Pretty sure. Um, I'm going to say that Pluto is a lie. Nope. The what? Pluto one is true. Damn, that's fucking crazy. I know. Sydney, I forgot to have you guess. <laughs> Do you have a guess out of the oh, other two? I was going to guess the last one. Pluto? Yeah, yeah. so we guessed the same okay. one. Okay, yeah. That's okay, true. So then it's the first one. Your cell's dying at 24. DNA. Nope, that's true as well. Great yeah, Wall of China? I, you're dying. <gasps> yeah. yeah. The Great Wall cannot be seen from space. Why it's a rumor. Lying? It's a popular lie. A lot of people think that. I actually oh thought that too. And then I found God. out in my you're research. Like, Oh my god. But I, like think about it. Have you ever seen a picture from space where you can see the fucking Great Wall? <laughs> no. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and there's the Great Wall. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, true. So yeah, that one's the lie. Okay. Okay. Isn't that crazy though? You start dying at age twenty four. Great. Yeah. It's all downhill from here, people. We're already <laughs> headed towards the Great Wall. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're under 24, That's congrats. Why we're you're about still to fucking living. run to get Botox. That's because right. <laughs> our cells are not turning over quickly. <gasps> yep. Oh my god. Our cells are dying faster than they're multiplying. Shit, bro. That's not that's not beautiful at all. Ah, oh, I tricked you. Okay, is so it my yes. turn? Yeah. Good job, Kendall. Thank all right, you. number two. This does have a theme, and the theme is celebrities. Okay. Number one, Casey Musgraves wrote her first song at age nine. Number two. Seth Rogen smokes, on average, 20 joints per day. I see these were made for me. Okay. And number three, this is random, Ryan Gosling almost was in the Backstreet Boys. He does look like he could be a Backstreet fella. Okay. Okay. Does he even sing? 20 joints a day. That's a hell of a lot. It is. I'm going to say that's the lie. Seth well, does not smoke that good much. Good job. Yeah, Thank I should have. I 20 was too much. I should have narrowed it down. To like nine or ten and i knew casey did write her first song at nine because i'm a true stan you are do you know what it's called no it's called notice it. me and it was for her elementary school graduation oh cute casey now fun fact um yes ryan gosling was invited to become a member of the backstreet boys who went to, on to become america's you know biggest boy band uh he lived next door to backstreet boy aj mclean oh wow i did not know that yeah according to google Hmm. Now, Google is never wrong. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed. Confirmed, baby. The next two are celebrity okay. facts as okay, well. Okay. okay. Number one, Eminem does not allow any profanity in his house, even though he likes to cuss a lot in his music. Okay. Number two, Michael Jackson created more original dance moves than any other artist in history, including the moonwalk. Number three, Tim Allen was arrested for... <laughs> Oh boy, it's like Bird Tim Cage Allen. all over again. Tim Allen was arrested for cocaine possession in the 70s. God, that's this is hard. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, let's think. Let's think. Let's think. Michael Jackson, Tim Allen. And what was the first one again? Um, Eminem does right, not right, right, allow right, right, any profanity no in his house. I'm going to guess that Tim Allen did not get arrested for cocaine in the 70s. What do you think, Sid? Do you have a guess? Yeah, I guess the same. Wrong. Damn it. What? Homie did get arrested for smuggling cocaine, and he went to jail. Would you like to see his mugshot? Tim. Uh, I know. Tim was bad. Damn, Tim was kind of hot back then. I know he was. Okay, fine. Then I guess that Michael Jackson dance moves. Hang on. I'm not done with my fact about oh, Tim. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. In 1978, he was caught with 1.4 pounds of cocaine. Oh, fuck. In an undercover operation, and he was facing life in prison. I was going to say, yeah, that's but a he lot. snitched on the other dealers in exchange for a letter sentence and served like wow. two years. Like I had it written down, but I forgot. But I think it was like two years. What? I know. Oh my god, Tim! Crazy, scandalous. I know. Okay, so what's your next guess? My guess is, um, or my guess is Eminem. That he, you're allowed to cuss in Eminem's home. Wrong. What the fuck? He allows no cussing. Okay, in so house. Michael Jackson did not. Michael Jackson did not create more. I made that up. And he did not make the moonwalk. He actually stole that from someone else. <gasps> really? Yeah. What? I did not know that. Yep. Knew I could trip y'all up with that. Yeah. Wow, Eminem doesn't allow cussing in his house. Isn't that interesting? I read an article about it. He said, absolutely not. No profanity. Okay, that's a little lame. I didn't go out. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
lame. She will not be going to Eminem's house. Clearly, we would not be allowed in there. <laughs> Clearly not. Jeez. Okay, this last one is also random. Number one. Sushi didn't actually originate from Japan. Number two. A penny dropped from the top of the Empire State Building will kill you. Number three. Sushi used to be used as a form of currency. That is smart times. Sushi is money. I like that. It's the penny. The penny is fake. <gasps> How'd you know that? Because I've heard that real. that was fake too. That's oh one of those ones I've heard before. Oh my God, I'm sucking. Kendall's It can like me. cause a nice dent on your forehead or like hurt, yeah, but it, can't, it won't like you. go. Th- I used to think it would go through your brain or some yeah. shit, but no. Okay, well, let me talk to you about my facts from about yeah, sushi. Yeah, I want to know about the sushi so, thing. So, sushi actually emerged somewhere along the Mekong River in Southeast Asia before it reached China and then eventually Japan. Wow. So, it did, did not, not know that. start Japan. Hmm. And also, yes, yeah, sushi was once highly prized, was once so highly prized that people were allowed to use it to pay taxes in 88th century Japan. Damn, their Why? taxes. I want to pay my taxes in sashimi. I'd rather pay in money than give up my sushi, though. No, I'd rather pay in sushi. Well, and sushi then buy costs more. Sushi. I mean, one piece of sushi is more than a dollar these days. But what if it counts as like one piece of sushi counts as $20, <laughs> whereas one piece of sushi usually is about 3 to $6? What if it counts for $1 million? Then would you use it for sushi? Probably. Mm, now I just want sushi. Me too. Fuck, that I love sushi. really good. I want sashimi. I know, I kind of want it for dinner now. I want salmon. Goddamn. Mm. Okay, Sydney, you got one? Let's see what you got. Okay. Yes. So, number one, there are two parts of the body that can't heal themselves. Okay. Number two, Kylie Jenner knew how to pole dance when she was 10. And then bananas are curved because they grow upwards towards the sun. See, now I can't answer this because this is... I already saw her questions oh, yeah. last night. Oh, so you right. can answer them. Okay, well, I know Kylie Jenner was pole dancing on the show. And I think she was like 10. I remember that up. I do too. Bananas are curved upward. What was the first one? There are two parts of the body that can't heal themselves. I'm going to go with the banana one is a lie. Nope. It's bananas true. are really curved up because they go to the sun. Yeah, and the one like where the body part, it's yeah, your, what? it's only one, and Wait, what it's is your that? teeth. Oh, that would make sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, your they don't come can't. back. No, mm. they can't repair themselves on their own. Interesting. Damn. I was gonna guess like the tongue or something, but no, that could heal itself. Yeah, teeth. Speaking of teeth, guys, I got Invisalign. I got a major lisp going right now. Well, it's not in my mouth, so you can't hear me, but. It's not as bad as you think it is, but I can see how it would like it feel so weird, weird to, to you. Me. Yeah. Because part of it behind my front teeth, there's like this big shelf thing to make it so that my bite, I can't bite down all the way because my they're fixing my overbite. And so my mm. tongue keeps hitting it. And that's what's causing it. Wear Damn. your retainer after braces, folks. Yep. Message of the day. Yep. Or be like me and get Invisalign after. Anyway, when I was younger, I never had braces and I was so jealous of everyone that did. And I wanted a retainer so bad that I put a barrette in my fucking mouth and tried to convince people it was a retainer, a barrette, like one of those little snappies. And did they fall for it? No, probably not. Didn't you do something else as a kid and then either teacher would I be like, what the so fuck? so many things as a kid <laughs> that my teachers were like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Constantly a teacher's like, what the fuck? What the fuck, bro? That yeah, was a wild one. That's amazing. All right, you ready for my last celebrity round? Yeah, hit us. All right, number one. Jack Black's mom solved a problem on the Apollo 13 mission while she was in labor with him and saved helped save 13 astronauts. Number two. Jim Carrey regrets working on the Grinch and thinks they've ruined the Dr. Seuss classic. Number three. Mike Tyson spent $2.2 million on a gold bathtub. I think the first one's a lie wrong what the fuck i suck ass <laughs> jim carrey doesn't regret it wrong no. huh? yeah, yeah no, he jim doesn't carrey does not regret the he grinch. doesn't regret it although yeah. he said it was so brutal that he almost quit yeah i remember that like with his contacts yep. and the makeup and the co- he had to sit for like in costume for like eight hours yeah he said it was like excruciating he said that he got trained by i think i want to say like military seals or some navy seals <laughs> yes yes to he did endure, say this. like torture he said it was that bad yeah yeah i actually was reading about it last night let me look this up yeah, it's crazy. He the amount of like 
pain it sounded like he had to go through. Listen to this, though. The real pain was the makeup artist. The Grinch makeup artist checked into therapy because of Jim Carrey. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. Said it was that brutal. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. I know. Well, well shit. He wait. was. Oh, they said on set, J- Jim Carrey was mean to everybody at the beginning of the production. They couldn't finish. After two weeks, we could only finish three days worth of shooting schedule because he suddenly would just disappear and then when he came back everything was ripped apart he couldn't shoot anything from the like take off all their makeup he would like lose it it was really hard for him to wear all that oh interesting but yeah he i don't think he regrets it he he was proud of his work on the the Grinch. so yeah greatest film to ever exist but that means it's true that jack black's mom was a badass i thought this was so cool she was she literally left work working on the Apollo mission. So the what, Apollo 13. What, did, what was she? She printed out a problem. And I don't know exactly what she was, but she then brought it to the hospital and was literally working on his uh, birth announcements and this equation at Damn, the same time. Badass. She called them up in labor and gave them the solution to this problem. And she s- helped save 13 astronauts. Wow. That's fucking crazy. And then gave birth to Jack Black all on the same day. God, shout out to Jack Black. Loves yeah. us. He's the best. And wow. it's true. Mike Tyson spent two point two yeah. million dollars on a gold fucking bathtub. Yeah, I remember now hearing about that. that. Why is bouge? In the that's fuck? insane. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, I love a good bath, but I ain't spending two two point two million dollars on a bath. Can on you bath? imagine? You like better take bath. a bath like three times a day. Totally. Well, that was fun. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for that, Kendall. You were You're you killed me. I sucked. Damn. I spent too much time on this. I was really bored yesterday. Really? <laughs> yeah. I spent like two hours putting those together. Oh my God. <laughs> it's hard to like think of the bullshit facts. That's what That's I had That's the hardest with. part. Yep. It's like figuring out what's not true. I know. Yeah. I thought I could maybe trip you up with the Grinch one because there was the whole talk about how horrible the makeup was and yeah. everything. But no, he's, he's not ashamed of the Grinch. <laughs> Hell yeah. And yeah, Timmy L. God, fucking Timmy's 1. a four pounds of coke. That's a lot, dude. Yeah, That's dude. like a fucking lot. I know. I know, but his mugshot is hot. Holy shit. Yeah, he is kind of hot. Shouts out. Size matters, but as they say, it's not just the size of the boat, it's the motion of the ocean. And with my base weekender bag, there's room for everything. They've got hyper functional and chic designs. You've got all the nooks and crannies you could possibly need, and even some surprise space to effortlessly fit it all in so you don't have to settle for anything less. Base was created by actress Shay Mitchell to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories designed to help you travel effortlessly while still looking fashionable. And they've thought of everything you could ever want in a piece of luggage. 360-degree gliding wheels, a cushioned handle, built-in weight indicator, washable bags for your dirty clothes, and an all-interior pockets you need to keep organized. Their luggage comes in multiple sizes and colors. And for shorter trips, the Weekender bag is super functional. I love the Weekender bag. I've used it several times. I am shocked at how much I can actually fit in this bag. And a huge pro is the fact that on the bottom, they have a full separate compartment where you can put your shoes or dirty laundry, bathing suits, whatever it may be. And every piece is made to look better with miles. So you don't have to worry about it in cargo or overhead. And Base has over 30,000 five-star reviews. And whether you're packing for a quick trip or looking to breeze through the security line, Base has your personal items covered. And right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash sesh. Go to basetravel.com slash sesh for 15% off your first purchase. That's B-E-I-S travel.com slash sesh. Let's get into Am I the Asshole? Oh, I am ready. I haven't even looked at these. I'm so excited. I know, neither have I. It's going to be great. It's been so long. All right. Am I the asshole for getting mad at my girlfriend for making me lie to my friends because she got her period? My girlfriend and I have been together for two years. She always has been very neat, tidy, and polished. She cares about her appearance, and I appreciate that. (laughs) We were at a very fancy event with a few of my friends. My girlfriend was wearing a beautiful white dress, which I recently bought for her, and the dress was very expensive. However, At one point, she excused herself to go to the bathroom, and then I didn't see her again until she sent me a text from the car asking if we could go home. Obviously, I'm slightly annoyed because I didn't want to leave so soon. When I reached the car and asked why she wanted to go home, she told me she got her period unexpectedly. I asked why she didn't bring extra tampons or pads. (laughs) She 
Oh, okay, bro, sir. I see where this is going. Oh, boy. She tried to defend herself by saying she did everything she could and she had a period stain and didn't want to stay because of the stain. No shit she doesn't want to stay, bro. Mm-hmm. She asked me to lie to my friends and tell, tell them that she was feeling unwell so that she could go home. She had a man's jacket, a mutual friend of ours, covering her legs and the nasty stain and pleaded with me to take her home so she could shower and unwind. I took her home and lied to my friends. When she was getting out of the car, the stain was very noticeable. It was very big and essentially ruined the expensive dress that I bought. Oh, God. She also made me purposely lie because she wasn't prepared enough and made me miss an event with my friends. Needless to say, I was extremely pissed. She said I was being inconsiderate and went to lie down because she had a, quote, headache. (laughs) She woke up and I didn't speak to her properly and waited for her to apologize. Bro. Oh, my God. You are the asshole. asshole. Can we agree? I don't think this is going to take much deliberation. (laughs) Asshole. (laughs) Fuck you. uh. Seriously. Who even writes something like this without realizing how stupid they sound? How stupid you are. Yes, you are the asshole. You have no idea what it's like to have a period. Sometimes you, even if you are prepared and have all, like sometimes you go through it really fast. Or or it just leaks faster than you can keep up with. You don't even realize it. That is the worst. Yeah, it's horrible. What did he expect her to do? Just go back in there? Yeah, absolutely (laughs) not. The That's fact fucked. that he was throwing a little bitch fit about lying to his friends. Dude, like, they care. Right, they give a fuck. Also, why are you mad that you, she stained the dress as if she meant to? Also, she unexpectedly got it, so... Yeah. Like, She's typic- in a white dress? Yeah. Poor thing. I'd want to go home, too. Me, too. Mine's are the time I got my period in white pants on the second day of high school. Oh, no. Of ninth grade and bled all the way through them onto my seat and was oh mortified. Oh, my God. So shitty. Mortifying. Dude, I bet. Did I anyone call, see you? Not that I know. I mean, maybe they did. No one s- said anything. I called my mom in the bathroom, like, almost crying. I didn't know what to do. Oh, my God. It's like the worst feeling ever. Seriously. God, I remember some girl in my science class in like sixth grade got her period and it was like all over the chair and she stood up and a bunch of the boys started making fun of, of her. Course. Everyone was laughing. It was like, oh, I'm sure it was That's so traumatic so for her. sad. It really is. <sighs> yeah, you're the yeah, asshole. Definitely. Asshole. Okay, am I the asshole for expecting my partner to pay half of my hospital bill? So they say coming here is a last resort because I genuinely think this problem could be the end of my marriage. Wow. Um, Okay, so my husband and I welcomed our first baby three months ago. We've been married seven years now and decided it was time to expand our family. Everything was going well, and we were in our little newborn bubble of bliss until the hospital bills came. Both my husband and I have jobs and everything financially split 50-50, but we've always kept our money separate with the exception of a joint account for bills. Throughout the duration of my pregnancy, I plan to go for an unmedicated natural birth with as little intervention as possible. This was up until I hit the 24-hour mark of labor. I caved and got the epidural, which I was open to having if needed. My husband had no problem with it, even encouraged it. And when the bill came, he brought it to me to pay all $8,000 plus after insurance for my personal savings. So I asked why. He said, you're the one that couldn't hold out for a few more hours and jacked up the bill with all your meds in an extra night's stay. And he shouldn't have to pay for all of my extra requests. If I wanted luxury, I should expect to pay for it. I was <gasps> stunned and flipped luxury? out. Luxury? But I'll spare, you the, I'll spare you the details. He refuses to budge, calling me a princess for expecting <gasps> him to pay for all the, quote, extra add-ons I requested in the hospital. This is by far the biggest issue in our 14-year-long marriage or relationship so far, and I'm so lost on where to go from here. I gave in and paid the bill, but since then, we haven't been talking much, and honestly, I just feel disrespected. Do I have the right to feel this way, or should I, or is it just hormones? Am I the asshole for expecting him to contribute towards the cost of my child birth? Oh, dude, what's wrong with these men? God, <laughs> that is horrific. Okay, I think we can all agree. Asshole. Husband Trash. is asshole. Trash garbage. <laughs> yeah. That is fucked. That is, that's actually upsetting and ab- abusive, really. I agree. And the fact that, oh my God, it's, I mean, first of all, I have so many things to say. The fact that having a baby in general is so goddamn expensive in America, is outrageous. Dude, you, you need to you divorce pay, this guy. You pay a lot of money in America to give birth. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, that is horrific. That's so sad. I can't even imagine if Josh 
was like, you need to hold out to save money. <laughs> and he encouraged it for the epidural. And called her a princess. She just pushed your child out of her fucking vagina, dude. Do and you even have any idea what this feels it's like? It's also Clearly not. your kid as much as it is yeah. hers. So it sounds like you guys pay 50-50 anyways for bills. So why is this an exception? And you know, if it was you, your bitch ass would have gotten that epidural in two seconds. You probably wouldn't even have lasted as long as her. Absolutely. Women are so much tougher. Oh my, my God. God, that's horrible. Wow. God, Josh like bit his lip during dinner last night and was so dramatic about it, dude. I was like, <laughs> come on. Like, it was barely bleeding. Was like, oh! Yeah. He was like freaking out. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> I was like, dude, listen, I bleed a million times more than that mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can hush. Anything men can do, women can do bleeding. That's right. Oh, I like that. That is right. That's a, That should be a bumper sticker. <laughs> Fucking right, baby. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, he's the asshole. Case closed. Wow, that is fucking bad. That's like divorce grounds. Yeah, that like, is really bad. I would be so heartbroken if John did that to me. Me too. How horrible. I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah, I'd be leaving him. That's that's just, like I said, that's abusive. Fucked up. Am I the asshole for throwing away my son's Xbox? My son is nine years old and he's addicted to his Xbox. He plays it every day and only stops if he's told to. When COVID happened, he was inside at all times, and the only way he could reach his friends was through the Xbox. We're still in quarantine where I live, and so my son is doing online learning. He is struggling because he rushes through all of his assignments so he can play Xbox. Oh, yeah. I told him to work slower so he can get accurate answers, but he doesn't listen. I've tried to help him, but he didn't pay attention to me and is always fiddling with something. Well, I couldn't do it, so I asked my husband to try. He was able to get our son to do his work properly, and I thought he had finally taken care of it. Three days later, my husband came home from work, and he broke down. He said that he works, cleans, cooks, and helps our son with all his work. He needs a break and for me to start pulling my weight since I don't work. After our talk, I went to my son's room and threw out his Xbox. Ooh. He asked me why I did that, and I told him that he broke his father mentally and that he wouldn't be doing all this work if you weren't so addicted to the damn game. Am I the asshole? What do you think? I'd say you're an asshole. I think that's a bit much. I agree. Yeah. I, I think mean, you can, you know put restrictions on technology obviously in video games but to to break it to throw it out right i agree yeah i always think it's really weird when um parents resort to like destroying their kids stuff me too i think that's like extreme. just take it away mm -hmm. i think that's like not a good um way to teach your kids discipline of like oh you get frustrated or something doesn't go your way so just break just it smash it yeah, yeah. And it's kind of fucked up when it is during quarantine and that's his only way to communicate yeah. with friends and stuff and to take it away from him like that. I mean, just just put some more limitations on it. I agree. Dude. I don't think you need to go to the extreme of breaking it and then say your father's mentally breaking down because you're playing an Xbox, bro. Right. Really? That's, right. that's over the top. I agree. This one time, John said that he was at his good friend's house and they were playing Xbox and for some reason, his dad was really pissed at him. So he walked in, ripped the Xbox out of the wall and went to the backyard and threw it in their pool. Dude, that's like too far. <gasps> I know. That is too far. I know. Not good. I don't think that's really the solution to your problem if your husband says that he works, cleans, cooks and helps with the son and he needs a break. And so you go and break the kid's stuff. Right, right, right. I exactly. think you are the asshole. Case closed. Case closed. All right, here we go. Am I the asshole for firing an intern because she wouldn't stop hugging people? I manage the internship program at my job. We have six and 12 month internships. This post is about a 22 year old woman in the program. I'll call her Hester. I noticed Hester hugged her classmates a lot. Hester. Hester. <laughs> Hester. Hester. Well, anyways, Hester is a big hugger. She's hugging her classmates. It was something I brought up in our one-on-ones because it seemed excessive. Um, she didn't seem to like that feedback, but didn't say anything. Around December, she tried to hug me at a company function. Her review was the next day, so I brought it up again, saying that she needed to keep her hands to herself, that this was a workplace and not a social club, and reminded her that a lot of people, including myself, do not like being hugged. She argued with me and said that it was how she greeted people and shared a connection with them. I told her she needed to find another way to do so. She got sulky and... And I don't feel like we came to much of an understanding despite my efforts to talk through it. 
I told her that this would be the last time I am willing to have this conversation with her. A new intern program joined us a couple of weeks ago. On Monday, two of them came into my office and wanted to talk about Hester. Apparently, she had been constantly hugging them despite them both telling her to stop. I apologized to them and also had some conversations with the teams the interns worked with, and this had been, you know, an ongoing problem. Wednesday, I brought Hester into my office and told Hester her... Hester the hugger. <laughs> I brought her into my office and told her that she could no longer be part of the program. I explained that we had talked about this twice before, that she was making people uncomfortable, and she appeared to not be picking up on workplace norms. She was not happy about this and ended up needing to be escorted out. <laughs> Yesterday Damn, and Hester. today, I've been getting calls from her parents and her professor saying she needs the internship and that they don't think it's a big deal um, and I shouldn't have fired her. Am I the asshole? Hmm. Interesting. Excessive hugging. <laughs> yeah, Hester, the excessive hugger. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I think that you probably are not the asshole yeah because of the fact that you gave her it sounds like you talked to her multiple times you gave her multiple options to stop the hugging and to express herself in other ways and it seems <laughs> as though she <laughs> like if you had to talk like if this put yourself in his shoes would you fire someone though over that you think if it got to the point where other interns were coming to me being like yo your intern is making me feel uncomfortable because they keep hugging me then yeah, yeah I, I mean at the would. end of the day even though a hug may seem harmless it's still you know touching someone without their permission yeah you can't do that and especially I think it comes back to the point of you've talked this is not the first offense of hugging <laughs> there have been many <laughs> there have been many offenses of hugging and therefore, you, you know, given many options um, and she's not able to stop. And I also will say, I think that like the fact that this is an internship and she seemed, I think I would assume pretty young because her parents and professor are calling that when she gets into the quote unquote real world and has yeah. a quote unquote real job, like you can't do that. Right. You're kind of doing her a favor, teaching her a lesson to exactly. stop hugging people exactly. without their permission. Exactly. Which is kind of strange because I feel like hug is a kind of a mutual gesture. I agree. Like how often you go to someone and just hug, hug them, them without and they're just standing there like you're like, oh, my God, it's, it sucks because it's like a nice thing yeah. to hug people. Yeah. But when it's. You're in a workplace and you, you're just touching people. Who I agree. Aren't consenting. So like yeah, there you can't are do some that. people who work here who I would not just go up and hug. I would <laughs> hug Sydney. I would hug Kendall. I'd hug Crelly. There's like other employees here that I like. Yeah, we're all friends. Yeah, but then like there's other people that I feel like. That'd be so if I weird. went up and hugged them, they'd be like, the fuck? especially if you, because it's when you go in for a hug with someone. Even when I hug you guys, I like put my arms out like to like give you a heads asking. Up. Yeah, you exactly. know, like would you like to hug? And then the other person puts their arms out. I mean, if you're just like <laughs> grabbing people, it's weird. I don't think you're the asshole. I think you, it's probably was shitty to have to hug, to fire someone for yeah, hugging. Yeah, that's so awkward. Hester, you are the asshole. Case closed. Hester the hugger. That's hilarious, honestly. You guys know we are huge fans of HelloFresh at Mile Higher Media. Pretty much all of us here have subscriptions to HelloFresh, and with our busy schedules, it makes all of our lives so much easier. And Josh and I both believe that HelloFresh has taken it up a level lately because the meals we have been getting like the past two months have been phenomenal. And with the cost of groceries going up and up, now is the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh because HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. Plus they have 40 weekly recipes to choose from. So they have meals for all occasions, lifestyles and preferences. You can take your pick from meals like soy glazed salmon with rice or mushroom and chive risotto. Mm, I've had that one, it's so good. Delicious dinners are a cinch with HelloFresh's chef created seasonal recipes that come with ingredients already pre-portioned. So all you have to do is cook and enjoy and you can cut back majorly on food waste. That's one of my favorite parts about it because when I was coming up with our meals and grocery shopping, I was wasting so much food because oftentimes recipes call for something that only comes in a large amount and I can't use it all and it goes bad. So HelloFresh makes it easy to eat what you love and you can customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, even adding a protein to a veggie dish. So check it out today. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SESH60 and use code SESH60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash SESH60. Use code SESH60 for 60% off plus free shipping. 
All right. Am I the asshole for taking my kids to my parents' house to sleep because my husband will not enforce the rules when his parents visit? Mm. My husband and I live three blocks away from my parents and they see our kids almost every day. My husband's parents live a couple of states away and only see the kids a few times a year. It's easy when we go see them since we only visit when the kids are off school. But when they come to see us, it's at random intervals throughout the year. Not a problem, really. They are excellent grandparents, with one small exception. They think our rules go out the window when they visit. My husband's parents always ask why the kids can't watch TV with them before they do their chores and homework. Why do the kids have to be in bed so early? It drives me crazy that I'm the bad guy because my husband won't put his foot down, so I have to do it. They came last week, and on the first night, as soon as dinner was over, they wanted the kids to pay attention to them. They wanted to take the kids to see Avatar on a school night, and my husband allowed it. It's a long movie. They're not be getting home till way later. <laughs> yeah, it's like Did you three see hours. Avatar too? No, I think no. I have time. I can't go to the movies anymore. Oh, true that. <laughs> yeah, your movie days are over. They are. Okay. <laughs> I told him he knew that throwing the kids off their schedule screwed me over. So I gave him the choice of either enforcing our rules or I would. He said he would take care of it. The second night, there was a hockey game on. My father-in-law wanted to watch it with our son who loves hockey. I reminded my husband that our son has chores to do and homework. He said it was just a hockey game. But that was the last straw. The last straw. I told the kids to get their stuff. I took them and a change of clothes and their homework to my parents' house. I told my husband that my mom and dad will watch them and take them to school in the morning. When I got back home, my husband and his parents were waiting for me. My in-laws told me that I was being controlling and an abusive person by denying them time with the kids. Mm. And I am not the only person allowed to make decisions regarding the kids. And that they came all this way to see them and I'm being a jerk by keeping them on a schedule. Okay, fine. They are visiting for a couple of weeks. Wednesday after I picked up the kids from school and dropped them off at home with my in-laws, I went out for the first time in ages. I told my husband I would be out late and didn't want to wake anyone, so I would be at my parents' house. And then I did the same thing on Thursday night. My husband was calling me and coming over to my parents to tell me I needed to come home because the house was a disaster because his parents (laughs) were not doing anything to help. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, no. He told me his parents are on vacation and they are there to see the kids, not clean up. (laughs) The kids are having a fun time with no rules, and my husband has been contacted by the school because no homework was turned in on Thursday or Friday. I didn't answer his texts. I told him I would be back after his parents left unless he enforced the rules. He said I was taking it too far and that it was affecting his work. Ooh. So who's the asshole here? Who are the assholes? You know what? I understand where the mom's coming from, but I do think she's kind of an asshole for taking the kids to the other grandparents house when they when her parents see the kids all the time and the husband's parents live a few states away so they don't get to see the grandkids very often and i can understand that when you have special company rules get bent a little and you get to do some extra like you have special privileges because your grandparents are in town and you want to spend time with them or whatever however I think it's weak as hell that the husband can't like fucking keep the fort down, hold down the fort and make sure yeah. shit's not everywhere and that the house is in da- disaster and that your kids are turning in their homework. I feel like it sucks as the mom in so many households. There's one parent, whether yeah. that's the mom or the dad, who if they don't enforce the rules, yeah. then no one will. And then they look like the bad guy yeah. and they always have to be the asshole. But if they don't do it, the house is a mess. The chores aren't done. Homework isn't turned in. Right. I mean, that's pretty serious when homework isn't getting turned in very serious i don't know that was serious in my house oh yeah bro big problem your phone would have problem. been taken away oh, that bitch would have been gone for months yeah i would have if i had a missing assignment that'd be a big problem so i don't know i think it's kind of a hard situation i think everyone's kind of being a little assholey here i think the grandparents are kind of being jerks totally. for not helping. respecting their rules and helping and like we're on vacation them. right and that's just that's not really fair when you have to be the bad one and then the grandparents look cool. And right. Taking them to see Avatar in a school night, like I said, that's a long ass movie. They're going to bed really late. True. And kids like, I feel like now that I'm a mom, I really understand it. Yeah. Taking your kids off a schedule really sucks. When you've worked hard to get them onto a schedule, like I get so upset when Holly's bedtime routine is messed up. 
I get kind of pissed now. Really? Yeah, because it's like it messes up everything. Then they're tired the next day or they can't sleep right or their their naps get all messed up. So I don't know. I think it's a tough situation because I do agree with you that the grandparents are visiting. So taking them away from them. Yeah, that's kind of fucked up. But how else are you supposed to like really get your point across that you need to follow the the rules of this household. I, but that's I run like it punishing the every grand, day. That's punishing the kids, though. I agree. That's, that's true. That's not fair to the kids to like just... Dis- you're also still disrupting their schedule by taking them to the other grandparents' house. Couldn't she have sat down with the grandparents and just, you know, asked if there could be at least time? Yeah. Restraints, like, you can watch the hockey game for 30 minutes <laughs> or, like, do your chores real quick, do a quick job, right. and then come watch the end of it or something. I also think it's... This is just a bigger picture of how important it is for parents to be on the same page because then it is not fair for one parent to feel like they are the bad guy and the only one that's enforcing the rules while the other parents like clueless sounds like in this scenario and like doesn't know how to run the household without them. I agree. If you're you leave and then your household falls apart, that's just like pathetic from the other parents. No, I agree. Like you guys are a team. And if your kids start to see you that one's weaker and or one's more strict, then that's when things go bad Mm -hmm. they start disrespecting one parent or favoring the other parent and that's just so unfair because kids don't have that you know mature view to to realize that your parent is just trying to take care of you make you don't make sure you don't flunk out of school and live in a pigsty (laughs) yeah i know it's so true but yeah i don't know i can't really make a final decision on this i'm going back and forth final though if you had to make a final call oh it's tough the question was, am I the asshole for taking my kids to my parents' house to sleep because my husband will not enforce rules? True. I say, yes, you are the asshole for that specific piece yes. of the puzzle. I think it's fucked up to take your kids out of away from their grandparents and to um, mess up their, you know, schedule. Like, they're suffering because of the lack of parental... And missing out on time. Yeah. And he, I feel like the the biggest asshole here, which I mean, no one is like a, an asshole per se. Yeah, but for but the I context think I think this. daddy, I agree. I think daddy needs to step the fuck up and and tell your parents because that's an uncomfortable situation for her to yeah. have to be telling his parents right. what to do. He should say, you know, you respect the rules of our house and like we can have fun, but we got to be serious too. And exactly get our shit done. And I think it's also really. I mean, I'm not. Parents, I don't really know, but I would assume it's extremely annoying when you do your things your way and then your parents think that they know what's best for their grandkids. Yeah, that would really annoy me. You know what I mean? You're yeah. like, um, I get advice, but like trying to dictate how you parent is mm-hmm. probably so annoying. Yeah. So tough one. Yeah. I think, uh, I think we have to go with like everyone's a bit of an asshole yeah, a little here, bit. except for the kids. Except for the kids. <laughs> Ding, ding. Case closed. Case closed. Thank you. I've tried everything to get silky, strong, healthy hair. And when I say everything, I mean everything. One time I put mayo in my hair because I read that it was great to help split ends. Kendall's literally gave me the most judgmental face You ever. actually did that? I actually put mayo in my hair once because I read that it helped with split ends and it made your hair shiny and smooth. Well, newsflash, it didn't work, folks. Wheat womp. <laughs> Wheat womp. So if you've tried all of those ineffective hair treatments and are hungry to try something that actually works, give Vegamore a try like I did. Vegamore has helped to transform my hair. They have a clean and vegan approach to hair health, and they use smart botanicals that promote visibly thicker, fuller, longer-looking hair. With help from Vegamore, get healthy, beautiful-looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals. All their products are cruelty-free and never contain potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. And Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair health. The Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and improve hair from the roots. Just massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with the conditioner on lengths and ends. I love this shampoo and conditioner. First off, it smells incredible. It's the best smelling hair product I own by far. And I also love the fact that it really cleans my hair without stripping it too much. 
and it makes my hair feel so silky and smooth for days after washing. I also really love their Gross Scalp Detoxifying Serum. I think it does a really good job of getting rid of all the buildup in your hair without stripping it. I also really love their Gross Scalp Detoxifying Hair Serum. It works really well to get rid of any buildup in my hair and help with any flakes, and it supports a balanced scalp microbiome. And with Vegamore, there is no risk when trying because they have a 90-day money-back guarantee. But with 91% of customers saying they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you won't want to run out. So give your hair exactly what it's been craving with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash sesh and use code sesh to save 20% on your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash sesh. Code sesh to save 20% at vegamore.com slash sesh. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend that she needs to shave her legs? And this person says, now hear me out before you all throw the misogynistic uh, card. I'll keep it as short as possible. As background information, my girlfriend is very high maintenance. She doesn't wear makeup or do fancy things with her hair, but she's always spending money on creams and oils and masks or whatever to put on her face and skin. She says it helps moisturize and keep her skin and pores healthy. Honestly, I say that anything from health stores and brands is a total waste of money. But it's her money. <laughs> That's so broad. Anything from health stores and brands <laughs> is a waste of money, but it's her money, so I don't say much. That's amazing, honestly. Um, she is also very controlling when it comes to me and my apartment. My housemates and I are very busy and we hardly have guests over to entertain them. It's not like there are dead rats in the corner of the place, but she doesn't like the occasional sweater thrown on the floor or dishes in the sink. And she's always telling me to stop doing that. That's a little annoying. On to the story. We were invited to a friend's wedding and because I live much closer to the venue, she stayed the night. Cue the complaining about dishes, paper on the floor, etc. I had a long day, so I decided not to shower, uh, which, again, she complained about, but I let it go since I told her I'd shower in the morning. In the morning, when we were getting ready, I decided not to shower because I overslept and thought that washing my face and putting some cologne and deodorant would be more sufficient. My girlfriend obviously protested, saying that I was gross, so I got pretty annoyed and told her that it's gross that she doesn't shave her legs because it's a huge turnoff and it's disgusting. It's bad enough that she doesn't wear makeup or heels or normal things girls are supposed to do. Oh, no, you I know I can't force her to do anything, but it's expected, you know? <laughs> oh we're going God. We're going to a damn wedding. Things escalated and she got mad, saying that not showering was not the same thing as not shaving, especially um, as guys are not expected to shave. But society has already made that call. She then changed her clothes from slacks and a blouse to a dress that went to her knee, making her legs even more obvious. My mom says that I'm the asshole and siding with my girlfriend. But am I the asshole? You both are the asshole. Oh, you think she's an asshole too? Yeah, because she's like whining about the sweater on the ground. Piece yeah. Of fuck, it's his apartment. He can Agreed. do what he wants. Agreed in that sense, for sure. And he's also and she's also like bitching at him for not showering, even though he was going to put clone on. What if he reeks? Okay, but it sounds like he didn't reek. That he was going to put... He, she said that he was Wait, they gross. were going to a wedding, though, and he didn't shower? Yeah. I'm a shower person, so... I hate showering. <laughs> yeah, you do. I never bathe myself. But you never smell bad or look bad, so... And I've been showering more lately. <laughs> so I guess I can't judge, because maybe he smelled fine. And some people don't need as many showers as others. Some people don't need to shower every day. Not, I don't know when he last showered. However... But not shaving your legs is a personal choice. True. And it's like, it's such a hassle. It's so inconvenient. I'd be so annoyed if Josh was like up the ass about me shaving. Really? That would really bother me. Would you be annoyed if he was like, you're going to put some makeup on for the wedding? He, I think he would, if he ever, he would never give me shit about it, but yeah. I think he'd be confused if I went to a wedding without makeup just because I always would. I wear makeup all the time. Yeah. Because I want to. Yeah. Not because he makes me. Right, right. But I think if I didn't wear makeup, he would just he'd be like, he'd be used to it. Yeah, sure. Since she was wearing pants, you know, obviously she was trying to get a rise out of him. Like she changes into a dress. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Take like it it, in his face. Do you think it's wrong to ask your girlfriend to shave her legs if you're going to a wedding and she's wearing a dress? No, I don't think so. You don't think it's wrong? Or I mean, sorry, I, I think it's wrong to ask someone. I don't think it's wrong to not shave your legs and go to a wedding, even if you're in a dress. Many women don't shave That's ever. That's what I was going to say. I don't think you should have to shave just no. because you're a woman. Like, totally why don't not. you shave your fucking man legs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nasty man legs. Yeah. True. But obviously, they're just getting at each other because they're having fights. Right. 
And I just love the fact that he's like, honestly, I say that anything from health stores and brands is a waste of money. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> oh, my uh, God. But, yeah, I would say you're the asshole for trying to make her shave her legs. I agree. And for telling her that she should wear makeup to a wedding or heels because it's normal. <laughs> and that's what girls are supposed to do. Yeah, I agree. It's expected. We're going to a damn wedding. Oh, Mm -mm. that's so cringe. Mm -mm. Yep. I think we can call it boyfriend is the asshole. asshole. Although I will say, I think she's a little annoying to be like, oh my God, there's a sweater in the corner. Secondary charge girlfriend is also slightly asshole. Excellent work. All right. Dang, not fair. You get to use the gavel the whole time. I'm sorry. I thought I was the judge in this show. (laughs) Why are you the gavel? Why are you the judge? I don't know, because I do true crime. You okay. can do I'm it. I'm gavel. sorry. I'm hogging. I'm getting the gavel one last time. I for apologize. Your last I three. did knock off a little crystal on it, though, Fuck, on the base. Bro, I know. I'm sad to tell her. Well, don't she knows now. Know. She's going to edit this. Oh, right. Sorry, girl. I, <laughs> I love you I so like, much. She'll never know. It's just a tiny one on the base. Oh, no. On the tip. On the tip. Just the tip. Yep. Just the tip. All right. Am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend that he will not go on vacation when I'll be freshly postpartum? So my boyfriend works for a large corporation and as part of their employee rewards program, they have this thing where the best performing employees get flown out on a chartered private jet to a nice location and get put up in a five star hotel, all expenses paid for, such as liquor, food for two weeks. Damn, that's awesome. That really is. Holy shit. Where do you work? And I thought our benefits were here. Good. Dang, that's crazy. Mm. Private jet. Yeah. Mm. So they're scheduled to go on November 1st, and I'm scheduled to give birth to twins <gasps> on October oh, 17th. God bless. Less than two weeks. Yeah. God bless everyone who has twins or any multiples. I don't know how you people do it. Like, you're superheroes for real. This trip is in Bora Bora. <gasps> Shut up. Ooh, oh my God. That's tough. My boyfriend really wants to go because he thinks it's a great networking opportunity. Might I add, the option is to either take a 10K bonus and Mm. get the vacation or just a straight 14K bonus without the vacation. So if you don't go on the vacation, you get 14K. But if you do get 10,000 plus the vacation. Oh, my God. What kind of company is We're working at the wrong place. (laughs) My company. (laughs) We suck, apparently. (laughs) Okay. My boyfriend doesn't want to do that because he says we're pretty comfortable financially. He made an analogy and compared it to choosing between being as rich as Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates. What? Because Bezos is richer than Gates. Okay. Is he? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. She says, this is a ridiculous analogy because we're not billionaires. And even though we are comfortable, it's not like passing up on 4K is a wise choice. Anyways, three weeks postpartum by myself without my partner isn't exactly something I want to do. He told me he already spoke to my mom and my twin to see, oh, she has a twin too, runs in the family, to see if they would want to take care of me. And they agreed. But I don't want them. I want him. He doesn't get it. Am I the asshole? (sighs) <sighs> oh my god free trip to four four and ten grand <laughs> what a or 14 jet. grand <laughs> or 14 that's grand. crazy because four grand is not worth the private jet and two weeks in bora bora all expenses paid i would think not no so the better choice is to go with the 10 grand in the trip yeah but i agree <laughs> i'm not saying i agree with him because i would kill josh <laughs> if he was about to jet off to bora bora I and i just him. had a, even one baby yeah i agree and you're missing out on those first couple weeks. That's the saddest part to me because that that time goes so fast. They're only these little squishy balls <laughs> of goo for like so long. <laughs> they're like blobs. Yeah, they're, they are. They're so cute and so sweet. Those newborn snuggles you can never get back. Totally. I feel like that is not worth Bora Bora and 14 grand, 10 grand. Plus, whatever. you're still getting... Yeah, I was going to say it'd be one thing if it was like, well, then you get nothing, but you're getting more money. Yeah. That if you were to stay home. And you better start saving up if you've got twins. And it sounds like if this is a yearly thing, you go next year. Right. Exactly. And yeah, it sucks, obviously. Like, who wouldn't want a free trip to fucking Bora Bora on a PJ for two weeks? Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Now, could you compromise? I still wouldn't want this personally, but could you compromise? Like, okay, you go for five days, not two weeks. Then you get your ass back here. On the private jet. But mm-hmm. I would still be... Because he did... I wouldn't want that. He gave a solution. 
by saying, I asked your mom and sis, and they said, yeah. Which is good, but it's not the same. You right. Know, yeah, you right. want your partner, and like I said, you're you're going to be missing out on those newborn weeks, which you'll never get back. Yeah. You'll never no, be I that agree. young ever again. And I think it's also just the principle of like, oh, so I get to stay here and take yeah. care of our kids while you jet off the Bora Bora. Plus, you're going through so much healing and emotions. Like, I would just be emotionally distraught if I was struggling and up all through the night trying to get used yeah. to having newborn twins He's and my husband's like... Sipping coladas and Bora Bora. <laughs> Hell no, dude. I would divorce. I would be pissed. Yeah. Absolutely not. I would be pissed too. I Absolutely would. Absolutely not. I mean, I do get it's, it's a conundrum because that is a good opportunity. But again, if this isn't every year thing and right. you're still bringing home 14k right take the family on a nice vacation later on when the babies are a little older and mama is healed i agree i think husband boyfriend is the asshole i agree and Can i do you- not think you're the asshole for making him stay no case closed, case closed. <laughs> oh Ooh, so four hits on that four gavel hits. baby four hits for 14 grand nice. yep can you believe that? Show. That's wild. Damn, what that is, fucking company? I really want to know what I company that is. I cannot imagine being left alone postpartum, especially with twins. That would be so brutal and just emotionally horrible and trying to heal. What and, if it was your, not your first kid? Still. Still. It's even it's more intense, so than you got dude. multiples. It's way more than you even realize until you go through it. It's just like so intense. Yeah. Yeah, I would I just be imagine. sad, like all the little moments, like oh, they did this, or, yeah. and then your your partner's missing it. I would hate that. I would be more like the fuck. I'm here, rotting in my yeah. bed with my newborn. All, my my vagina's night. ripped up, trying to crawl, piece itself back together, and you're all fucking sipping coladas and bikinis. Yeah, I would not be able to handle and that Barbara. emotionally. I'd be so pissed. What's up, Sid? Okay, so we raise this different <laughs> situation or scenario. But what if you were a year in or even six months, right? Okay. Right where you guys are at right now. And this was presented to Josh or John. Ooh, How would you hard. feel now? Even if you... I would go with them. At that point, <laughs> if they were six months old, they'd be no, old enough to no, leave. Kids. Get their little passports. No kids allowed. Yeah, no, no, no. No, I wouldn't. No, I'd leave my kids with my grandparents. <laughs> 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 at least that's what I say now. I'm not a mom, so I guess obviously I don't know for Two sure. Two weeks but would be really hard. I at least go for a week, uh, on yeah, a, a week. private jet to Bora Bora and getting paid time grand still. I Kids think stay at grandma's in, house. I could do one week. I'm fucking jetting, jetting off. off. <laughs> Hell yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I think I could do a week, okay. but it would be really hard to be away from Holly for more than a week. We have a little trip coming up where we're going to be gone working on a project for five days. Five days, and I'm like freaking shit over it oh i bet i was gonna ask you about that i'm really sad i feel like i'm gonna be losing it by the end would you miss actually no that's not a good question but if you had to be apart from josh for two weeks or holly from two like two weeks would it be like a easy i'd rather be away from josh for two weeks than holly really <laughs> yeah but i wouldn't want to be away from either of them i know I, I, just... I don't think i've ever been away from josh for two weeks not to, the longest we've ever been apart was when we first started dating he went on a missions trip and then i went on back in his church days. And then I went on a little trip with my family and it was like 20 days without seeing each other, but we weren't even dating yet. And that was the last time we were separated for that long. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been away from John for two weeks. I don't think I would function very well. I've been away from him for like a week. But... And to be honest, I'd be like kind of annoyed if Josh left for two weeks because having like dealing with a baby and our 10 pets is a lot for one person. Oh yeah. I would just be like overwhelmed. And then I'd just be annoyed that he was off. Sipping peanuts. Peanuts? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that sounded weird. Peanuts. He's sipping peanuts in Bora Bora. I'd yeah. be jealous, jealous. No. But would you go with him? Yeah. And leave your- Holly? For one week, though. No longer than that. That'd be so hard. Be yeah. Bora Bora on PJ. I know, but nothing's better than my daughter. <laughs> True. Never thought I'd like say that, but she's the best thing ever. Well, when I'm not fact, surprised you said that. I really need to get home to her because my girl is sick. Yeah. Needs mommy. How's so, she doing? She's good. She's doing a little better now. That's what my nanny is saying. Poor girl. She still got the snots going though. She got the sids. Or the I think sids. Oh God, hold on, cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I meant sods. She has the sods. Oh, 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 I didn't even catch that. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you think we should cut that? 
She's like, do you see how this is? It's kind of funny, though. It's kind of funny. <laughs> clearly an accident. Yeah. I meant the suds, folks. Like on SpongeBob when you got snot coming out of your nose. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> I feel really bad. I'm Knock sorry. Oh my yeah, God. I'm duh. sorry. Uh, the suds. I'm like apologizing for you. <laughs> Yeah, Kendall didn't even like do anything. I was like, I didn't oh. even. I thought she said suds. You're looking so bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyways. <sighs> yeah, go tend to your little squishy. I will. She's a sick squish. I got her um some like special bubble bath. It's like vapor. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. I gave her a vapor bath bomb last night. Ooh, fun. Mm-hmm. She didn't do much though. So old I enough to use one. essential oils or no? Uh, depends on who you ask. Yeah, I'm sure. My, my doctor said over six months was fine, but like, it, you know. Tiny. Yes, and only certain ones, um, very small amounts. But I get them from Frida Baby. They make mm. baby formulated blends. But I'm sure some people will rip me for even doing that. Oh boy, here we go. The mom shame is real, guys. The mom shame. You know what my favorite mantra is? Mantra. M- thank you. <laughs> my favorite mom-tra. mantra. Oh. Right. Mind your own motherhood, people. You heard it here first. Learn it. Memorize it. Live it. Stop telling people what to do. It's annoying. It is. It's a good mantra for life. Mind your own fucking business. <laughs> what did yeah. I say? Mantra? Mantra. <laughs> Banter. God. Okay. I need to go to sleep. Oh, my God. Hey, it's been fun hanging out with you guys. It has been. Um, really quick, please go on Spotify and follow our show um, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really helps us. And give us a rating because we really appreciate it. Yes. And that's going to be it for this week. We will see you on the next sesh. But until then, keep keep it it fresh. fresh.